in the last lecture uh, we looked at different consensus algorithm so we had the discrete version of it so that's discrete consensus algorithm which was of the form xk plus 1 is a times xk and then this a happens to be let's say uh, using the metropolis hasting uh, uh, Hastings weighting algorithm. So, A was designed to be of the form uh, max of di. So, this is Aij. And this is only when i j i and j are neighbors this is this is how you design your uh, consensus algorithm right for discrete time. Then we looked at the continuous time variance of it. So, there was a simple a standard consensus algorithm which was every agent i would run this x i dot is x i dot is essentially summation x i minus x j, but this summation is going to be over the neighborhood set of phi right. So, if I were to write this vectorized form of it, what would this look like? x dot is negative L of x right, where L is the Laplacian. And finally, we looked at the fixed time variant of it. So, it was and the idea behind fixed time is so you we use x i dot is negative j. So, this time we use this funny looking function of this form right. So, instead of using x i x x i minus x j we had this kind of uh, consensus scheme right and how do we define sign of x is defined to be this is how you define this right and we choose mu 1 and mu 2 to be of uh, basically if mu 1 is a fraction and mu 2 is a fraction. So, these are the, the numerator and the denominator are the odd terms right. So, you basically make these functions as odd functions and if you try to recover pretty much something like this which is which is the case with standard consensus algorithm, but then you because we want to expedite it even further that is where we use uh, this particular kind of construct. What we have seen so far uh, today would be the first application of uh, this consensus scheme and in fact your first introduction to a real uh, real world uh, distributed optimization problem which is distributed economic dispatch problem. I will write this as EDP for economic dispatch problem. And the idea is, uh, so, so does anyone recall what is what is economic dispatch from previous lectures or the first lecture rather the introductory lecture we had. So, this is about a power network and you have multiple types of buses in the network. Let us say let me use a different color and so on and what may happen is uh, so you have a network which which is connected like this and so on so you think of these blue dots as generator versus this is an power network So, you have generator buses, you think of these uh, sign dots or the magenta dots as load buses 
and the go the objective is so essentially let us say at, at any given time. So, at any given time you have p total as the total load demand at any given time ok. So, every generator it would want to generate certain power. So, that the total power that is generated in the network it is going to be equal to this p total this quantity that we want to match right. You do not want to produce extra because in that case you would be I mean it would either go as line losses or it you would end up uh, damaging cert certain parts of the network obviously or maybe in fact the loaded loads that are going to be con that are connected to the network or you are also not going to be producing lesser than that what is demanded because in that case you would not be able to serve the load uh, total load demand that is there right. Now, when I talk about this kind of top, uh, underlying network in this uh, uh, in this example, uh, you see these these are the edges, right? So they can be. I mean, you can basically manifest the physical connection between two generators as these edges, or you can also assume that a generator. Let's say I call the generator one and generator two. So that means generators one and two can exchange information with each other, right? Now e generator. So another constraint is that e generator. has its own private cost coefficient. Now, suppose you are a independent system operator who runs this power network right and you ask different generators to generate power so that uh, you meet the total load demand. Now, from the perspective of the generator I would want to generate as much power as I mean uh, as I can so that all the profits that I am going to be getting after like after meeting the demand I mean that should get credited to me right. So, I would ideally want to not care about what everyone else is doing, but I would I mean ideally like to minimize my own or maximize my own profit right. And that is that is against the sort of uh, uh, central theme of this distributed cooperative optimization that we want to focus on. So, we want to be able to generate like every generator want to be able to generate the required amount of power in such a manner. So, that the sum total is going to be equal to p total this quantity p total, but then at the same time I am not like aware of what other generators private cost coefficients are right. So, essentially it is the cost of generation let us call it c i or defined as c of p i c i of p i this is going to be uh, alpha i p i square. So, we assume it is usually it is assumed it is a quad, uh, quadratic cost. So, these coefficients like for the ith generator these coefficients alpha i, beta i and gamma i they are only known to the ith generator and they are not known to the other generators. So, that is why it is private cost coefficient. So, alpha i So, I would not want to uh, tell my neighboring generator about how much it takes for me to generate a certain amount of power right. Uh, because anyone else can then uh, sort of uh, use that information and try to maximize their gains. So, you would ideally want to keep your private cost like basically cost coefficients private. So, you only you know uh, how much it costs you to generate certain amount of power. So, that is one constraint uh, that the total power generated is should be equal to P total. So, essentially if there are n generators in the network. So, this is one constraint right P i this is going to be equal to P total. So, there are n generators in the network. Okay. What else can you think of in terms of constraints for this problem? No, that is the objective, but in terms of constraints, uh, what else can you think of? So, for each generator, for instance, uh, has certain like I mean, it cannot generate beyond its capacity, right? So, there are going to be some capacity kind of constraints. So, there are going to be generation or generator capacity constraints. So, let us say the IR generator cannot generate anything more than p i max and it has to produce at least p i min amount. So, in certain cases we can assume that p i min is 0. So, either it produces nothing 
or it produces not, not more than something like TI max. Okay. So, this is the capacity constraint. So, what should what should be the social goal here or what should be the cumulative goal here? So, to minimize the total cost generation, right? I, I do not care about a particular generator, I want to minimize the total cost of generation subject to certain constraints. One is the uh, demand demand constraint. So, that total uh, total generation should be equal to the total demand that is one con constraint and the other constraint is the gen capacity constraints, right. So, this basically allows us to write down the economic dispatch problem in uh, and this is. So, minimize with respect to PI summation through n. Okay, so this, this is your objective function subject to you have 1 through n pi this is equal to the total load demand and you have the capacity constraint right. Okay. So, we so far uh, in this course we have mostly focused on unconstrained optimization as far as uh, minimizing a particular objective function is concerned. I mean we had also looked at uh, equality constraint optimization in the context of uh, Lagrangian based methods and so on, but so far uh, we have largely focused on unconstrained optimization. So, if I just look at care about this particular problem and ignore this capacity constraint. Okay. So, this is called uncapacitated uncapacitated economic dispatch problem. I mean it, it still has equality constraint, but then equality constraints we know are easier to work with than the than the inequality constraint. So, this is usually called uncapacitated economic dispatch problem. And the moment we also include the capacity constraints, then this is called the capacitated the entire problem this is called the capacitated economic dispatch problem. And the goal is at least for this lecture the goal is uh, so develop fixed time convergent optimization algorithm for solving the capacitated economic the full version or the capacitated economic dispatch problem. I mean the agents know the problem is well posed I mean the problem is well defined you do not know as a centralized entity you do not know uh, I mean we have not come to the algorithm part yet right the problem is well posed. I mean the algorithm what how we are going to be ensuring that this gets satisfied in the sense that only agent i needs to know about alpha beta and gamma, but they would they are still able to solve this uh, problem. So, that is so obviously they are going to exchange some amount some information with their neighbors right and that is like if let us say in a in a distributed optimization problem any node uh, let us say there are multiple nodes in the network and if if there is no exchange of information either in the consensus problem or the optimization problem there is no exchange of information between neighbors there is no way you can reach the centralized goal right. One way one thing is to not know about what someone else is trying to minimize, but you can also you can exchange certain other information let us say you can let us say you are trying to minimize summation of fi fi xi right. I need not know what their fi is, but I can at maybe query what your current xi is and based on that I can try to get a sense of what the cumulative objective function looks like. And that is what we would be uh, focusing on. So, in this case we assume that we do not know alpha beta like like agent j does not know what uh, or the generator j does not know alpha beta and gamma for the i h generator, but they would still want to minimize this total uh, this uh, total objective function which is the sum of the individual uh, gen cost generation cost subject to the equality constraint. And if you look include the capacitated economic dispatch problem then it also I mean you also in basically include the end up including the generation capacity capacity constraints right. So, 
as I said, inequality constraints are relatively difficult to deal with. So, to I mean to make things easier, we would first start with the uncapacitated economic dispatch problem. We will try and develop an algorithm for that where we would guarantee that every agent would converge to the optimal solution for this. So, this is slightly different from the uh, usual economic uh, usual distributed optimization problem right. Suppose I want to minimize, uh, so this is just an aside thing. So, so, if, so, some of the variants that we have looked at for the economic or for the usual distributed optimization problem is subject to x1 equal to x2 equal to x3 and xn right. So, that is what we had looked at right so far at least that is how we had introduced distributed optimization problem. So, this is this particular problem is slightly different from the problem over here because we do not want this consensus kind of constraint on x size because I mean every generator can end up generating different quantity different amount of uh, power right. We just want to ensure that the whatever power that they are generating the sum total of it is going to be equal to the total load demand. So, it is slightly different from that, but uh, again like it needs to be solved in a distributed manner and because it is a distributed optimization problem. So, it sort of falls under the same similar category alright. So, how do you think are the agents or the generators in this case are going to be coupled with each other? Like how are they coupled in this problem? Let us say, so let us focus on uncapacitated economic dispatch problem for now. So, we are going to look at uncapacitated economic dispatch problem ok. And looking at this formulation, how do you think the uh, different uh, different generators are coupled with each other. If I just look at the uncapacitated problem. So, they are not coupled through objective function right, they are coupled through the constraint which is like if I mean you cannot greedily generate or greedily optimize for your own objective function because we we also have to ensure this particular thing right. If had there been no constraint then everyone would try to optimize their own objective function locally and that this would have been fine right. But because there is this constraint here that means, I cannot just look at I mean greedily sort of optimize my own objective function and not care about someone else's uh, ok. So, if you have an equality constraint like this and you do not want to exchange your cost coefficients with your neighbors because those are your private cost coefficients, what variable or what can you think of uh, as a proxy or, or something that you can exchange with your neighbors to get meaning to get the uh, to get to the relevant uh, or to to be able to minimize the objective function here. When we think of this constraint, P total minus P i it would not help as much. Uh, what about ok, so how do you, uh, so when you have equality constraint problems how do you deal like convert them into in uh, unconstrained optimization? use the Lagrangian formulation right. So, use the uh, Lagrangian. So, what is the Lagrangian of this problem? So, let us say there is a Lagrange multiplier lambda, it is going to be a scalar variable right because there is just one equality constraint. So, it is going to be a scalar variable. So, it is going to be defined in terms of pi's and lambda and this is going to be your original objective function. So, this is your Lagrange. And we are defining the Lagrangian because it is equality constrained optimization problem. So, we are trying to convert this constrained optimization problem into an unconstrained one right. Plus ok. If you want to use augmented Lagrangian then you also add a uh, square of it or something, it is up to you how you want to. But what is one spe special thing about this uh, formulation other than like I mean you have converted the, unconstra the constrained problem into an unconstrained problem, what is one special thing about this uh, formulation? Or what is uh, what is one special thing about the uh, dual variable or the Lagrange multiplier lambda here? Now, let me also I mean just just to be consistent with sign I mean it does not matter. So, I am going to be writing this as I mean this is just to be consistent with the standard text ok I mean it is it is one and the same thing 
because it is both I mean these are equality constraints. So, it is one and the same thing. No, but p total is a demand right p total is not the total of what everyone's even if it is known I am saying that p well let us assume that it is not known, but let us say even if it is known you also have to ensure that you minimize this plus I mean some so p total is a demand it is not what everyone else is generating like it is not the sum total of what everyone is generating this is the demand load demand right. So, you want to it it may vary, but I am saying that P like do not think of p total as summation of p i right. I mean it may not be right and if you start with you will be very different from it. Uh, yeah, so, they, they do not care about p total right. They, they, Okay. So, you have beta i minus lambda i times pi and then the constant term. But what is lambda? So, one thing is that when you look at this dual variable right. So, what kind of information are you going to be exchanging with your neighbor and it is much easier to exchange this lambda right. So, I, I would say that I have my own belief on lambda you my neighbor may have. So, essentially it is going to we are going to be running consensus on lambda. And so, somehow we have to use a distributed uh, optimization or distributed consensus flavor to be able to I mean we have to reach a common goal right. And of the things that we know we are essentially going to be running consensus on lambda because everyone shares the same lambda ok. Is this clear? So, let us look at let us try to characterize this lambda. Yes, I mean for now let us assume it is no I mean, but then eventually I would say eventually no. But let us try and characterize this lambda first ok. All right. So, how do we find lambda? So, this is an unconstrained optimization problem all right. So, the derivative of this with respect to p i as well as lambda should be 0. So, this when you take the derivative with respect to lambda set it to 0 this is you recover nothing but the equality constraint. But if I take the derivative uh, with respect to p i and set it equal to 0 this gives me 2 alpha i p i plus beta i minus lambda let us say this is at optimality right lambda star this should be equal to 0 or this gives me lambda star is equal to 2 alpha i p i star plus beta i ok. In other in other words p i star first so let us let us first let us call it equation 1 and if I if I look at p i star from here, this is nothing but lambda star minus beta i upon 2 alpha i right. So, if I can reach consensus on lambda, I can just subtract beta i from there divided by 2 alpha i and that would be the optimal power that I should be generating ok. So, this is one thing. So, so this basically tells you that the generators they would actually want to run consensus on lambda. Once they arrive at a consensus on lambda, they would ensure uh, they would just ensure that uh, their pi star is essentially going to be this. So, they do not need to worry about. Now, what is lambda? Let us say what is lambda star? So, how do you find lambda star from here? So, if I divide lambda star by 2 alpha i, so this is pi star plus beta i over 2 alpha i and I know that summation p i star is going to be p, p total. So, that means lambda star times summation i equal 1 through n 1 over 2 alpha i. So, this is equal to p total plus summation i equal 1 through n beta i over 2 alpha i ok. So, this implies lambda star for uncapacitated economic dispatch problem. So, this is going to be p total plus summation i 1 through n ok. 
okay so this is the this is how you characterize if you if you were to solve this in a centralized fashion this this would have been your lambda star okay but i mean you because we are not going to solve it in a centralized fashion we are just going to run consensus on lambda star and then eventually use this to solve uh, to find pi star then how do we ensure that this equality constraint is satisfied so you are going to be generating initial p i 0 in such a manner so that sum of p i 0 is going to be p to p road. So as long as that is satisfied because the sum is preserved you are going to get lambda star and lam from lam once you get the lambda star then you are just going to sum it up. Uh, you are just going to run equation 2 and that is how you are going to get p i star. So now in exchanging this information about lambda star I do not have to inform my neighbors about my private cost coefficients right. All I am going to be exchanging information with my neighbors is uh, just lambda, the dual variable. And once I know that there is a consensus on lambda, even if there is no consensus on lambda, every time I am going to be generating pi, which is going to be lambda minus beta over 2 alpha, right. And as soon as this converges, that's, that means uh, we have reached a consensus and this is the going to be the optimal dispatch value from the generator. Is this clear? Yeah, so let us say for instance everyone like there are n generators. So, if for now assume that p total is known. So, if there are n generators everyone is going to be generating p total uh, uh, p total by n that is one way. The other way is and which is the right way. So, the load is going to be connected to one of the generator buses you just uh, so the load bus is going to be so essentially the sum of these uh, sum of these load values are, is going to be p total right. So, this, lo this load bus is simply going to relate to its nearest generator about its total load demand and this would be the pi 0 for this. This would be the pi 0 for this, this would be the pi 0 for this because no other load is communicating its demand to any of these generators and their pi is p, p 0s would be 0. So, in that case summation pi 0 is going to be guaranteed to be equal to p total. So, that is how we, so you do not need to know the entire load in the network. The generate the load buses are just going to communicate the, uh, to their nearest uh, generator buses about the total load demand. It may happen that there are certain scenarios for instance like you have multiple loads connected to load buses connected to the same generator. So, in that case this generator p i 0 is going to be the sum of these two ok. But then in this way you know the total load demand in the network you do not I mean you do not know the total load demand in the network, but you are just going to be ensuring that summation p i 0 is always going to be p total. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that is one thing we had already seen, right? Uh, in when you run the average consensus, it's it's average consensus, right? So summation pi is always going to be uh, equal to summation pi zero. That stays. That quantity remains conserved. So we have to design algorithm such that this this is going to be true. So we are now going to look at the algorithm. <coughs> 